do a couple questions. Okay. So, first of all, uh, what do you know about climate change? The causes, what it is? Uh, well, I know that over 99% of scientists believe that there is such a thing as climate change. Climate change, um, it's something that we're actually studying in chemistry right now also. Well, I know that it's melting ice near the top of North America. So, uh, what we're starting studying is the carbon cycle and how the climate change is affecting earlier pollen seasons and how that can affect the effects of asthma. It's also melting um, ice in the North and the South Poles, which is leading to extinction of Arctic animals. That it is caused by uh, human emissions or, or carbon footprint. Uh, climate change is also made from like, greenhouse gases, I think. Our lifestyle has uh, increased it. Do you know what caused the hole in the ozone layer? I did at one point, but I don't anymore. All right. <laughs> I don't exactly know, but I have a pretty good idea. I think that with all the warmer temperatures in the atmosphere, um, it's kind of melting holes in the ozone. <laughs> Um, I believe the hole in the ozone layer happened uh, probably 15, 20 years ago and it's expanded a little bit, but uh, mostly from the CO2 that was coming up out of the stacks of uh, big factories. Well, I think you can probably guess I'm not a real sciencey kind of girl. Have you heard of the environmental pillar of sustainability? No. Sustainability, yeah, I haven't really heard that term, the, the what, the pillar? Absolutely. Changing our practices so that they can be sustainable or continue in the future. Uh, that could be anything from uh, our use of water to agriculture and the whole food industry um, to lifestyle changes that would cut down on uh, excess. What are the causes you know for uh, animal extinction in the ocean? Um, I think a lot of that is human related. I think a lot of it is because of um, population increases and the fact that we are destroying a lot of the habitat for animals. Um, littering, so things such as plastic bags and soda wrappers. Because of climate change and the different temperature change, um, I guess it could lead to a global extinction because if the temperature keeps changing, um, it could not agree with many plants or animals and it would lose food sources. Um, wildlife eating them or getting tangled up in them. Um, fishing nets are another big cause and just fishing in general. Do you know what a geological epic is? E P O C H. I do not. I know that from crossword puzzles. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Policy? No. The Holocene? No. No. And no. do you know what planetary boundaries are? Not far enough. Planetary boundaries? Isn't that the thing we have to first do to get to space? Uh, I believe so. I can make an educated guess. I think. The educated guess. Planetary boundaries is that we have to stay within our ecological boundaries within our, that our Earth is. And have you ever heard of the Anthropocene? No. 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 Probably not. So, now I will enlighten you. So, a geological epoch is an era in geological history so for the past 11,000 years, humans have been living in the Holocene, which was you know, perfect weather for humanity to strive. The Anthropocene is basically a new geological epoch. It's not all geologists have agreed upon it that's begun yet, but it's basically caused by human activity, like uh, carbon emissions. And when I asked you about before the planetary boundaries, there, are nine planetary boundaries, and they're basically nine global priorities relating to human-induced changes to the environment. And so some geologists think that 
1952, a new geological epoch began, the Anthropocene. Mm -hmm. And the reason that that's the date that it began is because that was when nuclear weapon testing first started happening. So uh, the Anthropocene is basically believed to be caused by human activity. Mm -hmm. And so here I can show you through this website that has a timeline of the Anthropocene. You see, everything on the timeline is human activity, like um, extensive farming, you know, first large urban settlement, you know, domestic domestication uh, of cattle. This is where we are now. Yeah. Right now, everything on the timeline is carbon dioxide amounts rising. It's, it's getting pretty bad now. <laughs> Another graph I have to show you is the planetary boundaries, is what I was talking about. Yeah. And there are nine global priorities relating to human induced changes to the environment. I asked you about climate change and the ozone layer because these are two of those nine. Okay. These boundaries are measured in four different sections. There's boundaries not yet quantified, safe boundaries, and uh, areas of increasing risk and high risk. Three of these novel entities are in the area of high risk. Okay. And so far. Yeah, so far. And there are five of the sections that are in the area of increasing risk. And this is basically what the Anthropocene is. It's these areas of risk increasing. And well, once they all get to high risk, yeah, <laughs> and so the Anthropocene, uh, the issue with it is that it's the um, environment of Earth is changing so much that it's not a epic that, that humans or many other organisms will be able to survive in. Wow, this is just bedtime reading, huh? My God, I'm gonna worry. <laughs> I mean, seriously, this is rough. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty scary. concern, alarm, that we have a hard time stopping it, that um, even though 99% of our scientists worldwide agree that this is happening, that we fail to recognize it, fail to do anything about it, or at least on a large scale. Whenever I hear these things, it kind of puts me on this kind of judgmental pace, like what have I been doing to help with this? Let me just say I am not at all surprised. But you taught me a lot. I don't own a car here, so I bike everywhere, so I try to cut down on that. Um, when we move back to the States, it'll be similar. I'll try to be conscientious about what we do, what we spend money on, how much well, we very rarely have buy packaged uh, ingredients. Most of our stuff is fresh, uh, uh, organic. I drink out of one of these. Yeah, I mean, we stop going to places that support that. Um, like, we stop going to really big restaurants to kind of help put the levels down. We stop wasting paper and we start recycling paper. I'm always on the lookout to try to educate people. And now I have some new things to talk to them about. I mean, it's not really shocking uh, to me. Like, it doesn't really drive any motivation for me to change, to be completely honest. Like, obviously everyone, like, wants to, but no one's actually going to go through with it. it. It just strengthened my resolve, and it's very timely. Uh, so I think because I am retiring, I have a whole lot of new things that I'm going to be doing, and I'll have time. And uh, one of the number one things, for lack of a better word, that I will be doing is rolling up my sleeves and being a social and political activist. And so, um, yeah, you just, you just gave me a, some more wind in my sails. Like, for instance, if there was, like, a vote to tax CO2, then yeah, I would vote to tax it, but I wouldn't do anything, like, by myself. What's running through my head here is I am so 
grateful and so, I guess, relieved and hopeful that you, how old are you? 15. A 15 year old is not just learning about this, like learning about it to take a little quiz or whatever, but you are delving into it and exploring it and questioning it and you continue to follow this, I know, I can tell. And that makes me feel so much 